हेलो डियर फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू अनदर लेक्चर ऑफ मशीन डिजाइन एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ न्यू चैप्टर डिजाइन ऑफ बियरिंग्स माय फ्रेंड व्हिच इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर फ्रॉम द एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू दोस ऑफ यू हु आर कमिंग टू आवर चैनल फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम लेट मी इंट्रोड्यूस टू अन अकेडमी गेट एम ई व्हिच इज इंडियाज ओनली यूट्यूब चैनल राइट नाउ dedicated to only mechanical engineers this is the one stop solution for mechanical engineering students agar aap mechanical engineering student hain to ye aapke liye ek one stop solution hai kyunki is channel pe sirf aur sirf mechanical engineering se related videos mechanical engineering se related lectures upload kiye ja rahe hain so this is my team this is our team which consists of some of the finest teachers of india my friend so don't wait and please right now right now go to the subscribe button and hit it and subscribe the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon don't forget to press the bell icon so that you will be notified whenever we will be live so that you will never miss a lecture a live lecture bell icon dabana na bhule taki aap koi bhi live lecture miss na kare aur dosto हमें नंबर्स में ग्रो करने के लिए और ज्यादा से ज्यादा स्टूडेंट्स तक पहुंचने के लिए आपकी जरूरत है आपकी मदद की जरूरत है आपके कोऑपरेशन की जरूरत है तो डोंट फॉरगेट टू शेयर द लिंक ऑफ दिस वीडियो ऑन योर फेसबुक एंड योर व्हाट्सएप विद योर फ्रेंड्स माय फ्रेंड बिकॉज वी नीड योर सपोर्ट इन ऑर्डर टू रीच टू मैक्सिम नंबर ऑफ स्टूडेंट वी वॉन्ट दीज वीडियो टू रीच टू एज मेनी स्टूडेंट एज पॉसिबल so for that we need your support for that we need your cooperation so please copy the link of the video and share it on facebook and whatsapp so that your friends can also get to know about these videos now my friend we have a few more offerings for you in the description of the video there is the link of our telegram channel where all the study material relevant to our lectures are uploaded in the pdf format so don't forget to follow our telegram channel the link is even given in the description if you are watching me for the first time let me give a brief introduction my name is aproop rao m tech from iit khadakpur and my specialization for pg was mechanical systems design then i was recruited by mahindra and mahindra i worked in their research and development center called mahindra research valley which is located in chennai it is the design center for the cars and tractors of mahindra and mahindra the cars of mahindra and mahindra we all know xuv 500 kuv tuv these are some of the finest suvs in india so they are designed at mahindra research valley so i worked there for 2 years as a deputy manager but i always had a passion for teaching i always wanted to teach so i quit my job and i started teaching so i have been teaching for more than 6 years now and i teach subjects related to design because my post graduation my two years work experience all are related to design so i can teach these subjects better i think so that's why i teach subjects related to design strength of materials machine design engineering mechanics and theory of machine and these are some of the other members of my team mr devendra singh negi air1 in gate 2019 and gate 2020 mr amit dikshit sir air1 prakar shivastav air3 all of the finest teachers of india my friend now let's move on to the topic today's topic is bearings which is a very important topic for a design engineer because you see bearings everywhere in daily life you see bearings everywhere we all know about bearings my friend but what is the definition of bearing what exactly is bearing what are the different types of bearing what are their applications all we get to know in this video lecture okay now my friend bearings are machine elements that support a moving element with minimum friction moving element means in any machinery there will be at least one moving element like shaft right which is rotating continuously it is rotating okay or sometimes it is axle what is the difference between shaft and axle we have discussed about this shaft and axle both are rotating element cylindrical rotating element but the difference is shaft 
is transferring power from one place to another place okay shafts are connected by means of belt drive chain drive gear drive and they are used to transfer power so they are subjected to torque but axles they freely rotate they freely rotate their objective is not to transfer the power their objective is to just support for example let's say you have a car okay which is a front wheel drive car front wheel drive car means the front wheel of the car are connected to the engine but the rear wheel is not connected to power the rear wheel is just rotating due to friction okay when the car is moving rear wheels are rotated due to friction so front wheels are connected to engine front wheels are connected to engine which is giving the power so the member the cylindrical member connected to the front wheels that is the shaft because it is transferring power it is taking power from engine and it is transferring to the wheels okay but my friend the rear wheels they are connected to axles because axle is not transferring any power my friend axle is just supporting the wheels okay so shaft and axle this is clear okay so shafts and axles these are rotating elements and in order to support these elements we need bearings now why bearings my friend why do we need bearings in order to support the rotating element see if the element is rotating if the element is rotating and you put it on any static surface this is rotating means this is a moving surface and let's say this is the support a fixed support so it is a static support okay so there will be relative motion there will be relative motion between the shaft and this support there will be relative motion and if there is relative motion there will be friction my friend now if the friction is not reduced there will be a loss of power if the friction is not reduced there will be a loss of power and there will be high wear and tear so in order to reduce friction in order to reduce wear and tear between the fixed support and the moving body we place bearings do you understand this my friend so bearing is the interface between the fixed support and the moving body why so that it can reduce the friction my friend there are arrangements in bearings to reduce the friction so we need bearings in order to reduce the friction otherwise if you just put the moving body on a static surface there will be a lot of friction there will be a lot of power loss so that's why we need specially designed bearings so that it will reduce the friction so what are the functions of bearings my friend two most important function two important functions of bearing are first function is to support the load acting on the shaft because the shaft is first touching the bearing and then the bearing is touching the fixed support okay so whatever load is acting on the shaft it is first transferred to bearings then the bearing transfer the load on the support my friend okay so there is shaft moving body there is a fixed support in between these two there is bearing so bearing has to take the load acting on the shaft this is the primary objective first primary objective the second objective is to permit the rotation of shaft with minimum friction see shaft must have to rotate okay shaft must have to rotate but the friction should be minimum otherwise a lot of power that you are giving to the shaft will be lost right so in order to reduce the friction there are some arrangement in the bearing my friend okay so this is the second objective to permit the rotation of shaft with minimum friction okay so taking load and reducing friction these are the two important job of a bearing do you understand this much my friend now my friend what are the types of load acting on the shaft see whenever the shaft is connected to another shaft let's say this is the shaft it is connected to another shaft then there is transfer of power and due to this transfer of power there is also transfer of load one shaft applies load on the other shaft for example let's say two shafts let's say this is one shaft this is another shaft they are connected by means of gear okay let's say these are connected by means of gear so when one gear will rotate it will apply load on the other gear and that's how power is transferred right one gear applies the load on the other gear and the power is transferred 
so this load is acting on the shaft because gear is mounted on the shaft so this load applied by one gear to another gear is acting on the shaft right now my friend all the loads acting on the shaft can be divided into two category okay whatever load is acting on shaft it can be divided into two category radial load and axial load understand this because we are going to use this term repeatedly okay radial load axial load radial load axial load so you have to understand what is radial load and what is axial load so the shaft is subjected to two types of load okay whatever loads are acting we can divide them into two category radial axial let's say this is the shaft let's say this is the shaft okay this is the axis of the shaft okay right now i am holding the shaft like this horizontal so axis of the shaft is in x direction right axis of the shaft is in x direction so whatever load is acting in x direction this load is known as axial load do you understand this much very easy if i am holding the shaft like this whatever load is acting in this direction in the direction of length it is known as axial load and whatever load is acting perpendicular to the length it can be like this 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 any load perpendicular to the length is radial load my friend okay so i can write it like this i can write it like this axial load means in the direction of length in direction sorry or you can write better you can write this along the length axial load means along the length okay along the length means in the direction of length axial load means along the length radial load means perpendicular to the length radial load means perpendicular perpendicular to the length okay so now it will be easy to remember it will be easy to remember axial load means along the length in the direction of the length radial load means perpendicular to the direction of the length any direction it can be y direction it can be z direction it can be inclined any load perpendicular to the length it is known as radial load mostly shafts are subjected to radial load mostly but it is not necessary that they are not subjected to axial load they are also subjected to axial load but mostly they are subjected to radial load okay so bearings have to support both these loads if there is only radial load then the bearing will be subjected to radial load if there is only axial load then the bearing will be subjected to axial load and sometimes both the loads are acting radial as well as axial okay so do you understand this much okay my friend now what are the types of bearings so basically my friend bearings are divided into two categories there are two categories of bearing okay now understand this because this is a very important concept how we divide the bearings how do we put them into different categories so this division is based on the type of contact this classification is based on the type of contact between the moving element and the fixed element see shaft is the moving element okay let's talk about in the context of shaft shaft is the moving element shaft is the moving body and the support is the fixed body okay shaft is supported on some fixed support so shaft is the moving element and support is the fixed element okay between this moving element and fixed element what type of contact is there there are two types of contact my friend rolling contact sliding contact let's understand both these things let's say this is the shaft let's say this is the shaft if it is moving like this if it is moving like this this is known as what this is known as what rolling my friend this is known as rolling if the shaft is moving like this this is known as rolling my friend okay and this this is known as sliding do you see this my friend do you see this do you see this this is known as sliding and this is known as rolling my friend okay this is known as rolling and this is sliding so do you understand this different my friend rolling and sliding 
when you move a wheel on a surface then the wheel is rolling my friend okay when the when you move a wheel on the surface the wheel is rolling and when you pull something okay let's say there is a box and you are pulling the box then it is sliding now what is the difference between rolling and sliding my friend in case of sliding the friction between the surfaces is maximum but in case of rolling the friction between the surface is very very less my friend very very less compared to sliding friction rolling friction is very very less my friend do you understand these two things rolling and sliding and what is the difference this motion is rolling motion my friend this motion is rolling motion and this motion is sliding motion okay so it is the type of contact between the shaft and the support my friend okay it can be rolling contact it can be sliding contact and what is the major difference between two in case of rolling contact the friction is very very less in case of sliding contact the friction is maximum okay so the bearings can be rolling contact bearings if the contact is rolling contact then it is rolling contact bearings otherwise it is sliding contact bearings now look at this my friend in this case in this case let's say shaft is rotating like this okay so this is the moving element and this is the fixed element my friend okay i'm just showing the surface i'm not drawing the entire surface i'm not drawing the entire element i'm just drawing the surface okay so this is the surface so between the rolling element and moving element and the fixed element there are balls okay there are balls so when this shaft will rotate the balls will start to roll okay when the shaft will rotate the balls will start to roll so what type of contact will be there rolling contact do you understand this my friend this is the moving element and this is the fixed element but between them we have placed balls okay between this moving element and fixed element we have placed balls so when this moving element will start to rotate what type of contact will be there rolling contact but look at this right now there is nothing between the moving element and fixed element so when this moving element will start to rotate it will slide my friend okay when the moving element will start to rotate it will slide like this it will slide like this okay it will slide like this so in this case there is sliding contact okay so these are the two major categories of bearings rolling contact bearings and sliding contact bearings in case of sliding contact bearings my friend friction is very high so in this case lubrication is very very important rolling contact bearings need minimum lubrication almost no lubrication okay because the friction is very less but in case of sliding contact bearing the friction is very high so we need a lot of lubrication my friend we need a lot of lubrication otherwise what will happen if there is no adequate lubrication then what will happen what is going to happen if there is no adequate lubrication a lot of power will be lost okay let's say you are giving 10 kilowatt to the shaft out of that 10 kilowatt if 5 kilowatt is lost means you are only getting 50 percent power right you are providing 10 kilometer kilowatt and it is only transferring 5 kilowatt 5 kilowatt is lost so this is a huge loss right so if there is no adequate lubrication power a lot of power will be lost and my friend if there is very high friction heat generation is also high heat generation is also high my friend so you also need to reduce that heat okay so lubricant also works as a coolant okay lubricant also works as a coolant because it removes the heat my friend heat generated due to friction okay so my friend in case of sliding contact bearings lubrication is very important here we don't talk about lubrication in case of rolling contact bearings we don't talk about lubrication why because it requires an almost no lubrication because the friction is very very less okay so their design process is completely different rolling contact bearings their design process is different sliding contact bearings design process is completely different why because their working is completely different and the thing that is important in sliding contact bearing lubrication it is not important in rolling contact bearing okay so that's why that's why 
we will divide this chapter into two parts rolling contact bearings we will study separately sliding contact bearings we will study separately okay so let's move on to the first type of bearing rolling contact bearing today we are only going to see rolling contact bearing in the next lecture we will see sliding contact bearings okay both are important from exam point of view both are important okay now my friend what is rolling contact bearing there is rolling motion between the fixed and the moving surface shaft is moving so the surface of shaft is moving surface and the support is fixed surface so between this moving surface and fixed surface which type of contact is there rolling contact why because we are placing these balls between the fixed support and the moving body so that's why when this body moves there will be rolling contact okay so there is rolling motion between fixed and moving surfaces low starting and running friction now this is an important point okay remember this point low starting and running friction starting friction means what my friend sometimes what happens is when you start the engine when you start the engine the friction is very high for example in case of sliding contact bearings this happens in case of sliding contact bearings when you start the engine initially initially the friction is very high this is known as starting friction okay but when the shaft starts to running at a certain speed then the friction is less so that is known as running friction do you understand this much point do you understand this much what is starting friction and running friction in case of sliding contact bearing we will see this we will see this in detail why this happens in case of sliding contact bearings in some bearings not all bearings in some bearings when we start the engine initially see let's say your engine operates at 1000 rpm let's say your engine operates at 1000 rpm so when you will start the engine will it reach directly to 1000 no it will start from 0 rpm and it will slowly move to 1000 rpm right so initially initially when the speed is very less friction is very high my friend why it is that why it is so that we will see later okay in case of sliding contact bearing why the running friction is uh, uh, why the starting friction is high that we will see in detail okay so initially when the engine is just starting friction is known as starting friction and once the shaft reaches to its operating speed then what is friction that is known as running friction so in case of rolling contact bearings both starting friction as well as running friction is very low that's why they are also referred as anti friction bearing although this name is wrong anti friction means there is no friction but there will always be some friction it will be less but there will always be some friction okay so it is not exactly anti friction but the friction is very less that's why they are known as anti friction now this point is very important my friend i want you to remember this okay because sometimes in some exams there will be one mark question there will be one mark question what is anti friction bearing so i want you to remember this what is anti friction bearing rolling contact bearings are known as anti friction bearing why because their running friction and starting friction both are very very less only if there is very high speed if you increase speed very high then the friction will increase otherwise at moderate speeds or at low speeds the friction is very very less almost negligible that's why they don't even require a lot of lubrication only very small amount of lubrication will do otherwise it doesn't require lubrication okay more noisy at high speed if you increase the speed they become noisy and their initial cost is also very high if you compare rolling contact bearing and sliding contact bearing rolling contact bearings are costlier compared to sliding contact bearing okay and this is also a very important point because there has been a question okay difference between rolling and sliding contact so what is this difference initial cost not maintenance cost maintenance cost will be less in case of rolling contact bearing maintenance cost will be less once you have brought once you have bought the bearing then you don't have to put any money because it doesn't require a lot of lubrication so maintenance cost is very less in case of sliding contact bearing maintenance cost is high 
because you have to put a lot of lubricant so maintenance cost is high in this case and initial cost is high in this case do you understand this much okay now where rolling contact bearings are used my friend you might have seen this in your day to day life rolling contact bearing ball bearing you might have seen this right in fidget spinners in fidget spinner a few years ago fidget spinners were very trendy everyone was using fidget spinner right fidget spinner so that fidget spinner that toy uses what ball bearings okay that's why if you start rotating the fidget spinner then it doesn't stop immediately why because the friction is very very less it will stop due to friction right and the friction is very less that's why it keeps on going it keeps on rotating okay so fidget spinners every day day to day life whenever there is a moving element there will be ball bearing okay so used in machine tool spindles automobile front and rear axles gear boxes small size electric motors in all these applications rolling contact bearings are used my friend okay now my friend let's understand the construction so my friend this is an overall view of a ball bearing okay i am taking an example of a ball bearing you can see these are the balls these are the moving elements okay these are the moving elements these are the balls my friend okay now there are four major parts there are four major parts of a rolling contact bearing okay can you see this this is an outer ring this is an outer ring okay there is a ring of metal there is a ring of metal outside so this is an outer ring okay this outer ring is connected to the fixed support okay this outer ring is connected to the fixed support this part this part is connected to connected to fixed support okay it is known as outer race it is known as outer race so this is connected to the fixed support whatever support is there it is connected to that okay and this is the inner ring look at this there is an inner ring also there is an inner ring also this inner ring is connected to the shaft this inner ring is connected to the shaft okay so it is rotating with the shaft inner ring is connected to shaft it is rotating with the shaft this is known as outer race and this is known as inner race okay outer race inner race do you understand this much outer race inner race outer race is connected to the support inner race is connected to the shaft in between inner race and outer race there are balls my friend there are balls why so that their contact will become rolling contact okay if you directly connect them that it will be sliding contact in case of sliding contact bearing there is nothing between these two races so there is sliding contact here we have put balls so there will be rolling contact when the inner race will rotate when the inner race will rotate outer race is fixed when the inner race will rotate the balls will start to roll okay so there is rolling contact now my friend the balls are not directly put the balls are put first in a cage this is known as cage okay can you see this part can you see this part the balls are placed in cage now what is the purpose of this cage my friend so that the balls will not hit each other if you just put the balls in between inner race and outer race what will happen when it will start to rotate balls will start to hit each other so the distance between balls must be maintained right there must be distance between the balls so that's why first we put them in cage and then we put the cage between the inner race and the outer race so this part is known as cage so four major parts inner race connected to shaft outer race connected to fixed support cage which holds the balls cage which holds the balls and then the balls okay this is the exploded view this is the exploded view can you see this is the outer race this is the outer race which is connected to the fixed support this is the inner race which is connected to the shaft okay can you see this groove can you see this groove my friend why this groove is cut why this groove this there is groove here inside this and there is groove here outside this okay why because we need to place the balls na we need to place the balls 
so there will be cutting this no this is known as groove it looks like this it looks like this like this so that's why see this see the ball is placed in the groove okay this is the groove okay in case of inner race this groove is made inside in case of, sorry in case of inner race it is made outside okay and in case of inner race it is made inside okay so do you understand what is groove do you understand what is groove this is groove we have cut this race now we have cut this race so this is known as groove my friend so inner race outer race okay then this is cage this is the retainer or cage or separator retainer separator cage sometimes it is also known as crown so all these are known as cage why this is used so that the distance between the balls will be maintained and these are the balls which are placed in this these are known as shield or seal they are not always used sometimes they are used to avoid the contamination okay sometimes they are used to avoid the contamination let's say you are placing the bearing in a very contaminated environment so there should be no con uh, contamination let's say there are some particles okay so let's say there are some dust there are some particles if they get inside this if they get inside the bearing what will they start to do they will start to increase the wear okay they will start to increase the wear so that's why we don't want any contamination we don't want any dust particles to enter inside the bearing so sometimes we seal them sometimes we seal the bearing so these are known as seals okay they also used to keep the lubricate lubricating oil inside okay let's say let's say you are using uh, lubrication very small amount of lubrication we need okay so if you put lubrication inside the bearing it should not come outside so in order to pack the bearing we also use seal okay so they are not used in every case but in some cases where the contamination is high or where the lubricating is done so that then in that case we use seal so do you understand this basic construction okay my friend now my friend rolling contact bearings are also of two types rolling contact bearings are also of two types ball bearing and roller bearing ball bearing roller bearing ball bearing roller bearing what is the difference in case of ball bearing in case of ball bearing the rolling element is a ball the rolling element is a ball now if the rolling element is a ball if the rolling element is a ball then my friend the contact will be a point contact right if the rolling element is a ball then the contact will be a point contact right contact will be a point contact okay point contact and due to point contact the contact area is very less okay these balls will only contact at a particular point okay so due to this point contact due to this point contact the contact area is very less okay so whatever load is acting on the shaft it is supported at a very small area whatever load you are applying they are only supported at a point so that's why their load carrying capacity is less load carrying capacity load carrying capacity capacity to carry the load load carrying capacity is less why due to less contact area okay contact area is less so you can only support less amount of load do you understand this much here the point contact is there between the uh, between the balls and the races there is only point contact so whatever load is acting on the shaft it is supported in a very small area so its load carrying capacity is less but in case of roller bearing see in case of ball bearings we are using spherical balls but in case of roller bearings they are there are cylindrical rollers there are cylindrical rollers like this there are cylindrical rollers there are cylindrical rollers 
ओके देर आर सिलेंड्रिकल रोलर्स लाइक दिस देर आर सिलेंड्रिकल रोलर्स लाइक दिस सो हियर माई फ्रेंड द कॉन्टेक्ट एरिया इज लाइन कॉन्टेक्ट हियर द कॉन्टेक्ट इज लाइन कॉन्टेक्ट लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी इज हायर देन द बॉल बियरिंग लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी इज हायर देन द बॉल बियरिंग लोड कैरिंग लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी इज हायर हायर देन बॉल बियरिंग हायर देन द बॉल बियरिंग वाई because the can contact area is more na the contact area is more here there is line contact contact area is more so that's why due to more area okay more contact area so its load carrying capacity is higher why due to more contact area here there is less contact area so load carrying capacity is less here there is high contact area more contact area so load carrying capacity is higher do you understand this much so there are cylindrical rollers in case of roller bearing there are cylindrical rollers it can also be different shape but there are cylindrical usually okay so ball bearing roller bearing do you understand this much in case of roller bearing the contact is line contact okay there is line contact like this line contact line contact okay line contact okay here there is point contact and here there is line contact do you understand this much okay my friend now ball bearings and roller bearings they are also of different types there are different types of ball bearings different types of roller bearings why do we need different different types of ball and roller bearing because my friend our application is different in some application we need a different thing in some application we need a different thing for example let's say there is an application where there is only radial load on the shaft okay let's say there is an application where there is only radial on the shaft radial load on the shaft and there is an application when there is only axial load on the shaft okay in one case there is only radial load in one case there is only axial load and there is a third case where both the loads are acting radial load is also acting axial load is also acting so there are three different applications right three different application one case there is only radial load second case only axial load third case radial load as well as axial load so in all these three cases will you use the same type of bearing will you use the same type of bearing no my friend no you will design the bearing according to your need you will design the bearing according to your need if there is only radial load you will design the bearing according to radial load if there is only axial load you will design the bearing according to axial load and if there are both the loads then you will design the bearing according to both the loads do you understand this much do you understand this much so that's why we need different types of bearing different types of ball bearing different types of roller bearing do you understand this much my friend now let's see one by one what are the types of bearing and i am using these images okay most of you might have seen different types of bearings but you might have only seen the diagram which is drawn in the books and you will not be able to understand exactly from those diagram it is not exactly clear what is ball bearing what is roller bearing it is not exactly clear but if you see these type of images everything will be exactly clear to you so that's why i am using these real life images okay instead of drawings of these bearings i am using the real life images so that you will be able to understand them better okay so one by one we will have to see what are the different types of bearing and it is an important topic why because in most of the questions in most of the cases they will ask you what is the type of bearing in this particular application what is the type of bearing in this particular application so this is an important question okay in which application which bearing is used okay the selection of bearing is very important okay even when you are designing the bearing in future okay let's say you are a design engineer and you need to design a bearing the selection of proper bearing is very important okay according to your application what type of bearing will you use that selection is very important okay so let's understand one by one what are the different types of ball bearing then we will see different types of roller bearing so the first type of ball bearing is known as deep groove ball bearing which is the most common okay 
दिस इज द मोस्ट कॉमन टाइप ऑफ बॉल बियरिंग मोस्ट कॉमन इफ यू हैव सीन अ बॉल बियरिंग इट मस्ट बी डीप ग्रू बॉल बियरिंग ओके इन टॉयज इन डे टू डे लाइफ इफ यू हैव सीन द बॉल बियरिंग इट मस्ट बी a deep groove ball bearing okay so in most this is the most common type of bearing okay and what is the speciality of this bearing what is the speciality of this bearing this ball bearing can support both types of load radial load as well as axial load i told you we need to understand radial and axial load what was the radial load what is the radial load radial load is acting along the length if this is the shaft radial load acts along the length axial load acts sorry 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 so sorry so sorry axial load acts along the length axial load acts along the length and radial load acts perpendicular to the length okay axial load means along the length in the direction of axis radial load means perpendicular to the length okay so in case of deep groove ball bearing shaft can be subjected to both radial load as well as axial load okay so it can support it can support it can support both radial and axial loads okay it can support both type of loads radial loads as well as axial load okay so this is a special type of ball bearing but my friend the radial load and axial load both are not equal let's say it can support 10 kN of road radial load then it will only support 1 kN or 2 kN of axial load okay so radial load and axial load they are not in equal proportion radial load is greater than the axial load okay radial load supported by this bearing is greater than the axial load it can support more radial load compared to axial load do you understand this much so this is the most common type of bearing and what is the special speciality of this bearing you only have to remember this speciality of every bearing okay why they are special why they are special you only have to remember so why deep groove ball bearings are special because they can support both radial as well as axial load and their radial load carrying capacity is more than the axial load carrying capacity okay it can support more radial load compared to axial load okay do you understand this much this is the first and the most common type of ball bearing deep groove ball bearing okay let's move on to the second type of ball bearing this ball bearing is known as angular contact ball bearing okay now why angular contact look at this my friend look at this look at this look at this can you see this my friend can you see this wait a minute wait a minute sorry 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 so sorry wait a minute can you see this thing my friend can you see this groove how it is cut can you see this groove how it is cut it is cut differently can you see this usually how the grooves are cut usually how the grooves are cut usually the grooves are cut like this usually the grooves are cut like this okay see usually in bearings the grooves are cut like this and then the ball is placed here so this is the type of arrangement that you will see in deep groove ball bearing right this is the groove see this is the groove okay this is the groove okay so the groove is cut like this but in case of angular contact bearing the groove is cut like this okay in case of angular contact bearing the groove is cut like this the groove is cut like this see the groove is cut like this now why the groove is cut like this why the groove is cut like this why the groove is cut like this because when you place the ball here when you will place the ball here 
then look at the axis my friend here here the axis will be like this the contact will be like this okay here the contact will be like this but here the contact will be like this angular contact do you understand this much my friend do you understand this much in case of deep brew ball bearing the contact between the ball and the races the ball is supported between the races the ball is touching the races along this axis the contact is along this axis but here the contact is along this axis inclined axis okay now will you will ask me why we are doing this why we are doing this in case of deep brew ball bearing the contact is along this axis in case of angular contact the contact is along axis why we are doing this because my friend if the contact is along this axis if the contact is along this axis then my friend then whatever reaction will be developed whatever reaction will be developed whatever reaction force will be developed see let's say the reaction force between the ball and the race is like this okay let's say this is the reaction force okay let's say this is the reaction force let's say this is the reaction force okay let's say this is the reaction force so can you see that the reaction force is now inclined can you see that the reaction force is now inclined can you see the reaction force is now inclined so my friend now the reaction force now the reaction force will be like this okay it is inclined so now the reaction force has two components now the reaction force has two components x component and y component right now the reaction force has two components let's say this is the reaction force r so now this is the axial component and this is the radial component can you see this can you see this can you see this my friend can you see this my friend when the contact is angular when the contact is angular then the contact reaction whatever reaction is developed it will have two component this component will be the axial component okay the shaft is like this the shaft is like this so this component will be the axial component and this component will be the radial component okay this component is axial and this is radial and my friend this can also support radial as well as axial due to angular contact due to angular contact it can support it can support both radial and axial loads both radial and axial loads okay now my friend according to this angle let's say this angle is let's say this angle is theta then according to this angle by increasing or decreasing this angle let's call this angle theta okay from vertical so by increasing and decreasing this angle you can increase and decrease how much should be the radial component how much should be the axial component usually usually we design them in such a way that the axial component should be greater than the radial component okay the axial component should be greater than the radial component sorry i should be writing like this i should be writing it like this fr by fa should be less than 1 okay here fr by fa is greater than 1 radial component is greater than axial component here radial component is less than axial component okay so you can design it like that by increasing or decreasing this theta you can increase or decrease the radial at axial component okay so you will design it in such a way that the radial component will should be less axial component should be high do you understand this much angular contact ball bearing do you understand why it can support radial as well as axial load because of the angular contact the contact is not on this axis vertical axis the contact is angular my friend okay now my friend 
सेल्फ अलाइनिंग बॉल बियरिंग वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग बॉल बियरिंग कैन यू सी दिस माई फ्रेंड कैन यू सी दिस हियर दिस इनर रेस कैन मूव माई फ्रेंड द इनर रेस कैन मूव एंड एडजस्ट माई फ्रेंड हियर माई फ्रेंड आउटर रेस एंड इनर रेस दे आर नॉट एग्जैक्टली इनक्लाइन इनर रेस कैन मूव इन अदर केसेस माई फ्रेंड यू विल सी दैट इन इनर रेस कैन नॉट मूव द एक्सेस ऑफ बोथ द इनर रेस एंड आउटर रेस विल बी एक्सैक्टली सेम ओके एक्सेस विल बी सेम फॉर एग्जाम्पल लेट मी ड्रॉ दिस लेट मी ड्रॉ दिस let me draw this so this is let's say this is let's say this is let's say just the drawing of inner rays and outer rays okay the shaft is inside this the shaft is inside the inner rays like this okay this is the shaft which is continuously rotating okay the shaft is rotating the shaft is rotating okay so this is the inner rays and this is the outer rays in between them there is a ball okay i'm just i'm just trying to explain i'm just trying to explain so my drawing is not very good so just understand now look at the axis my friend look at the axis this will be the axis this will be the axis sorry this will be the axis right this will be the axis so look at the axis inner rays and outer rays both axis are parallel to each other but my friend in some cases what happens misalignment happens in some cases misalignment happens so if there is misalignment if there is misalignment then what do you need if there is misalignment then you need your inner rays to rotate like this like this okay let me explain the concept of let me explain the concept of self alignment okay so there is this is the inner ra outer rays this is the outer rays the balls are like this the balls are like this okay and this is the inner rays sorry and the shaft is inside the inner rays can you see my friend can you see that now they are misaligned now they are misaligned but no problem why because your inner rays is rotated okay if the inner rays will not rotate and the shaft is misaligned then what will happen problem will happen okay but my friend in this case what happened in this case what happened if the shaft is misaligned if the shaft is rotating okay then the inner rays will also rotate like this okay this is the shaft if the shaft is rotated if the shaft is kept perfectly inclined no problem but if the shaft is rotated like this the inner rays will also rotate see the inner rays will also rotate see this case see this case the inner rays is also rotating like this and it will adjust it will adjust okay inner rays will rotate and it will adjust according to the misalignment of the shaft okay the inner rays will rotate and it will adjust according to misalignment of shaft here it is perfectly aligned okay here the shaft is perfectly aligned with the bearing and here the shaft is inclined so the inner rays is also inclined my friend so this is self aligning ball bearing okay it can adjust to the misalignment okay it can adjust it can adjust it can adjust with the misalignment it can adjust with the misalignment of shaft okay sometimes in some cases the shafts are not perfectly aligned okay this is perfect alignment 
because the axis of bearing and axis of shaft are same but this is misalignment okay axis of bearing is horizontal but the axis of shaft is inclined so in these cases we use self aligning ball bearing which can adjust itself okay by rotating like this by rotating like this it can adjust itself do you understand this much my friend now my friend thrust ball bearing now this is a special type of ball bearing my friend this is a special type of ball bearing which is designed to only support axial load designed to only support designed to support only axial load okay they are designed to support only axial load no radial load in case of thrust ball bearing no radial load okay so the load will be acting like this the load will be acting like this okay in axial direction in axial direction okay this is the axis of the bearing now this is the axis of the bearing so the load is acting like this okay all these loads are what axial load all these loads are what axial load okay these loads are what axial load so designed to support only axial load it cannot support radial load okay the these bearings angular contact and deep groove they can support both the types of load radial as well as axial load but this bearing thrust ball bearing can support only axial load my friend okay look at this arrangement look at this arrangement inner race ball outer race okay sorry inner race ball outer race okay so one is sub subject one is connected to the moving body and one is connected to the support okay one is connected to the moving body one is connected to the support okay so this is thrust ball bearing this is the thrust ball bearing okay now my friend these were the four types of ball bearing let's move on to roller bearing types of roller bearing okay so what are the different types of roller bearing the first roller bearing is cylindrical roller bearing this is also the very common type of roller bearing this is also very common type of roller bearing and this bearing can only support this bearing can only support it can only support this bearing can only support radial load it cannot support axial load why why because of the cylindrical shape because of the cylindrical shape it cannot support axial load it can only support radial load okay so this is a specially designed roller bearing for only radial load no axial load do you understand this one tapered roller bearing now my friend tapered roller bearing also have the same concept as the uh, angular contact bearing tapered roller bearing also have the same concept as angular contact bearing okay it also has the same concept so can you see my friend the groove is cut like this okay the groove is cut like this the roller is tapered okay the roller is tapered the roller is tapered okay here there is no cylindrical roller this roller is tapered my friend okay so the grooves are cut in such a way the grooves are cut in such a way that there will be angular contact my friend here also there will be angular contact here also there will be angular contact here also there will be angular contact okay here also there will be angular contact so it has the same concept it has the same concept as angular contact ball bearing okay angular contact so due to angular contact it can support both radial as well as axial load okay it can support due to angular contact due to angular contact due to angular contact it can support it can support both radial and 
axial loads okay so due to angular contact this is also using the same concept as angular contact ball bearing okay spherical roller bearing now spherical roller bearings are also self aligning bearing okay they are also self aligning bearing you can see due to this spherical shape the roller is of spherical shape okay the roller is like this the roller is like this okay the roller is like this why the roller is of spherical shape this surface is spherical okay in case of cylindrical roller this surface is flat but in case of spherical roller this surface is spherical okay why we are using a spherical roller so that it can align itself okay so that it can rotate like this see it can rotate like this and it can align itself okay so spherical roller can self align okay it has self alignment just like self alignment ball bearing we also have self alignment roller bearing which are known as spherical roller bearing okay the surface is spherical okay in case of cylindrical roller bearing the surface is flat like this okay this is cylindrical roller and this is spherical roller do you understand the difference do you understand the difference okay so this is a self alignment roller bearing needle bearing which is a very important type of roller bearing okay in case of cylindrical roller bearing look at this the size of the cylinder the size of this cylindrical roller it is very big but in case of needle bearing the size of this cylindrical rollers is very small my friend okay this needles these needles if you look at these needles they are like this right these needles will be like this they are known as needles why because their length is very high than the diameter my friend okay let's say this is the length let's say this is the length let's say this is the length and this is the diameter this is the diameter okay let's say this is the length and this is the diameter so their l by d ratio is greater than or equal to 4 okay so length is very greater four times of diameter okay at least four times of diameter so that's why they are not known as cylindrical roller their shape is also cylindrical their shape is also cylindrical but they are no not known as cylindrical roller they are known as needles they are not known as cylindrical roller they are known as needles why because length to diameter ratio is very high more than four here the length to diameter ratio is not that high okay here the length to diameter ratio is less than four okay if this is the needle if this is the roller sorry sorry let's say this is the roller let's say this is the roller let's say this is the roller so this is length l and this is diameter d and here my friend l by d is less than 4 here l by d is less than 4 okay but in case of needle bearing l by d is greater than 4 now why we are doing this why we are doing this needle bearings are used my friend needle bearings are used where where the space between shaft and bearing is less the shape space between shaft and bearing shaft and the surface the fixed surface is less okay so needle bearings are used they are used where space between shaft and support is very less okay so there is not much space let's say this is the let's say this is the shaft let's say this is the shaft and this is the support okay and there is not much space between them in order to keep the bearing there may there must be some space between the shaft and the 
moving sub uh, fixed support right so if there is not much space if the space is very less then you cannot use the cylindrical roller because this requires more space okay this requires more space so instead of using this much roller we use small needles okay so now the space is very less the required space is very less my friend do you understand this much so they are used where the space between shaft and support is very less my friend okay so do you understand this much due to their very less uh, small size due to this very small size see l by d ratio is greater than 4 means diameter is very less okay here the diameter is large here the diameter is large but in case of needle bearing diameter is very less so they are used where space between shaft and support is very less my friend do you understand this much my friend do you understand this much so we have seen different types of ball bearings and we have seen different types of roller bearing you have to remember you have to remember the speciality of every bearing you have to remember the speciality of every bearing okay where these bearings are used what is special what is special about these bearings okay you have to remember that all right my friend now my friend the most important topic from numerical point of view from numerical point of all these were theory questions all these were theory question now the numerical on bearing will be based on the life of bearing so let's understand what is the life of bearing and this is very important this is very important to understand what is the life of bearing okay my friend what is the use of bearing they are used to support moving elements right they are used to support moving elements rotating elements okay these uh, elements are rotating okay so when you are buying a bearing let's say you want a bearing for your shaft you are going to buy a bearing then what is the most important thing you will select what is the most important thing you will see you will see that if your shaft is going to rotate for these many cycles if the shaft is going to rotate for these many revolutions then the bearing should be able to rotate that many revolutions without failure let's say let's say your shaft is going to rotate 10 to the power 8 times okay let's say your shaft is going to rotate 10 to the power 8 times then the bearings should be able to rotate 10 to the power 8 times without failure it should not fail before 10 to the power 8 it should not fail before 10 to the power 8 it should be able to rotate 10 to the power 8 times with the shaft right so life of bearing life of bearing life of bearing life of bearing is defined as life of bearing is defined as the number of revolutions number of revolutions number of revolutions that the bearing that the bearing can make the that the bearing can make without failure do you understand my friend life of bearing is defined as number of revolutions how many revolutions the bearing can rotate without failure my friend without failure and it is expressed in million revolutions it is expressed it is expressed in million revolutions what is million revolutions my friend 10 to the power 6 revolutions okay so how the life of bearing is expressed 100 million 200 million 300 million okay so let's say i am telling you that the life of bearing is 50 million revolution okay life of bearing is 50 million revolution means it will rotate 50 into 10 to the power 6 times 50 million means 50 into 10 to the power 6 times before failure it will rotate 50 into 10 to the power 6 times before failure okay now my friend let's say 
you want to calculate how much should be the life how do you calculate it let's say i am telling you that let's say i am telling you that let's say for example i am telling you that i need a bearing for my shaft okay let's say i am telling you i need a bearing for my shaft my shaft rotates my shaft rotates at my shaft rotates at 300 rpm my shaft rotate at 300 rpm okay for 6 hours 6 hours every day okay 6 hours daily my shaft is going to rotate for 6 hour daily at 300 rpm and i need to design the shaft for 5 years i need to design the shaft for 5 years okay so what will be the number of revolutions what will be the number of revolutions let's calculate that what will be the number of revolutions my friend see it is rotating at 300 rpm 300 rpm means every minute every minute in one minute it is rotating for 300 times do you understand this much 300 rpm means for one minute is rotate it is rotating 300 times so 300 into 60 this much it will rotate for one hour in one hour there are 60 minutes in one minute it is rotating 300 times so in one hour it will rotate 300 into 60 and it is rotating for six hours every day okay six hours every day so in one day it is rotating for 300 into 60 into 6 in one hour 300 into 60 so in one day 300 into 60 into 6 in one year there will be 365 days so in one year it will rotate this much and in five year multiplied by 5 so 300 into 60 means for one hour 300 times in one minute 300 into 60 for one hour 300 into 60 into 6 it is rotating 6 hours every day so if you multiply by 6 it is the number of revolutions in one day if you multiply by 365 number of revolution in one year and if you multiply by 5 number of revolution for 5 years so how much will you get my friend how much will you get how much will you get 300 300 into 60 into 6 into 365 into 5 so you are getting how much 197.1 197.1 into 10 to the power 6 revolutions means 197.1 million revolutions do you understand this much how you can calculate how much life do you need how you can calculate how much life do you need let's say you want to buy bearing for your shaft you are going to calculate how much life do you need so how will you calculate number you need to know the rpm of the shaft you need to know how many hours it will operate for one day every day and you need to know how many years this shaft is going to operate okay so i am designing the bearing for my shaft which is rotating at 300 rpm 6 hours every day for 5 years so for 5 years what will be total number of revolution 197.1 million revolution so when i will buy the bearing for this shaft at least the life should be 197.1 okay at least the life of bearing should be 197.1 let's say the life of bearing is 200 million revolution then it is suitable for my shaft if the life of bearing is 200 million, million revolution then it is suitable for my shaft because my shaft is going to rotate for only this many revolution in 5 years so if the number of revolution of bearing is greater than this then the bearing will not fail then the bearing will not fail okay do you understand this much life of bearing now my friend the life of bearing are of two types the life of bearing are of two types the first life of bearing is known as rated life the first life is known as rated life the first life is known as rated life now what is rated life my friend what is rated life it is the number of revolution it is the number of 
revolutions it is the number of sorry it is the number of revolutions number of so sorry for this revolutions that at least 90% of bearings can make without failure okay see the life of every bearing will not be same let's say you are manufacturing 100 bearing okay let's say you are manufacturing 100 bearings okay and you want to find the life of bearing what you will do let's say you are making 100 bearings and you want to find the life of bearing what you will do you cannot test each and every bearing now let's say you are bearing manufacturer let's say you are manufacturing bearings you cannot test each and every bearing okay let's say you are making 100 bearings you will not test each and every bearing what you will do you will test only one or two bearings and you will see what is the life and based on that you will say that these 100 bearings have this much life now it is not necessary that let's say you are saying that the life is 100 million revolution it is not necessary that every bearing out of those 100 every bearing will not have 100 million revolution right if i say that let's say i have manufactured 100 bearings i am telling you that the life of these 100 bearings is 100 million revolution it is not necessary that every bearing will have 100 million revolution life right so if the number of revolution is turned by is made by at least 90 percent of the bearings then i will say that this life is the rated life okay if i am saying that rated life is 100 million revolution not every bearing will have 100 million revolution but at least 90 percent of bearings should have 100 million revolution life okay 10 percent bearing they can fail before 100 million revolution no problem but 90% bearing should pass. Okay, 90% bearing should at least have 100 million revolution. Then I will say that it is rated life. Okay, and it is denoted by L10 or L90. Okay, sometimes it is denoted by L10, sometimes it is denoted by L90. Okay, similarly, we have average life. Similarly, we have average life. Okay. What is average life, my friend? What is average life? It is the life of bearing. It is the life of bearing. It is the number of revolutions. It is the number of revolutions that at least that at least at least 50% of bearings can make 50% at least 50% of bearings can make without without failure okay and it is denoted by L50 okay it is denoted by L50 and there is a direct relation between average life and rated life my friend okay this relation is derived from this relation is derived from statistical probability okay so l50 is five times of l10 l50 means average life is five times of rated life okay remember this remember this this is a very important relation Ra average life is five times of rated life so what is rated life at least 90% bearing should have this life. What is average life? At least 50% bearing should have this life. And average life is five, time, 5 times of rated life. Okay? Alright. So life of bearing means how many revolution the bearing is going to make before failure. Okay? Now my friend, the life of bearing depends upon the load acting on the bearing. Okay? At different different loads, at different different loads 
there will be different different life at different different loads there will be different different life my friend okay let's say you are applying 10 kilo newton let's say you are applying 10 kilo newton the life will be different and if you are applying 20 kilo newton then the life will be different right whatever load is acting on the bearing what is the second primary objective of bearing i told you two primary objectives first is to support the load and second is to reduce the friction right so it it is subjected to some load so whatever load is acting on the bearing if you increase the load the life will decrease if you increase the load the life will decrease so there is some relation between life and load okay at different load the life will be different so what is that relation my friend let's see what is that relation let's see and this is a very important relation all the numerical from rolling contact bearings are based on this one formula you only have to remember this one formula because every numerical from rolling contact bearing till now are based on this formula okay in every exam gate engineering services psu ssc state level exam every exam there will be numericals based on only this formula my friend what is this formula let's see l10 equals to l10 means what rated life l10 equals to c by p whole to the power n c by p whole to the power n okay c by p whole to the power n this is the relation between load and life where l is the life and p is the load so see if the p is increasing load is decreasing so this is the relation this is the only formula you have to remember this is the only formula and understand the different things in this formula so l10 is what l10 is the rated life this we have already seen okay what is n my friend n is constant it is equal to 3 for ball bearing and it is constant equal to 3 for ball bearing and it is equal to 10 by 3 for roller bearing okay so n is a constant if there is a ball bearing then it will become 3 if there is a roller bearing then it will become 10 by 3 do you understand this much now we will see what is c and what is p okay what is c and what is p okay so first we will see what is c okay so c is known as dynamic load carrying capacity also known as basic load rating okay it is also known as basic load rating okay now what is dynamic load carrying capacity it is the load at which it is the load at which rated life of bearing it is the load at which rated life of bearing is 1 million revolution rated life of bearing is how much 1 million revolution do you understand this much my friend it is the load if you apply this much load then the rated life of bearing will be 1 million revolution if i am saying that dynamic load carrying capacity of my bearing is 20 kilo newton dynamic load carrying capacity of my bearing is 20 kilo newton then my friend it means that if i apply 20 kilo newton how much life i will get 1 million revolution if you apply 20 kilo newton how much life will you get 1 million revolution so it is the load at which rated life of bearing rated life not average life rated life of bearing is 1 million revolution so do you understand this much my friend this is like a property of bearing bearing okay in every bearing rated life is mentioned okay when when you uh, go and buy a bearing when you go to buy a bearing you will see in the catalog you will see in the catalog that the rated life will be mentioned okay that the rated life of bearing is this much okay so rated life means sorry 
लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी विल बी डिफरेंट मेंशन डायनेमिक लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी सो डायनेमिक लोड कैरिंग कैपेसिटी मींस इट इज द लोड एट व्हिच रेटेड लाइफ ऑफ बियरिंग इज 1 मिलियन रेवोल्यूशन व्हाई डायनेमिक लोड व्हाट इज डायनेमिक लोड बिकॉज़ दिस इज द लोड एक्टिंग व्हेन द शाफ्ट इज रनिंग इफ द शाफ्ट इज नॉट रनिंग देन द लोड विल बी स्टैटिक लोड एंड इफ द शाफ्ट इज रनिंग then the load will be dynamic load so do you understand what is dynamic load dynamic load means the load acting when the shaft is running okay so this is the c now what is p my friend let's understand what is p p is known as equivalent load now what is equivalent load my friend I told you, my friend, then the shaft can be subjected to the bearing can be subjected to radial load as well as axial load, right? Radial load as well as axial load. So P is the equivalent load. Okay? How it is calculated? It is given by this formula: V into x into F R plus Y into F A. Equivalent load is calculated by this. Equivalent load is calculated by this. Okay, where F R and F A are what? F R and F A are what? F R and F A are the radial and axial load. Radial and axial load. So if there is no radial load. then fr is zero if there is no axial load then fa is zero but if there are both then there will be some value of fr some value will be of fa okay what is x and y my friend what is x and y these are known as load factors these are known as load factors what is load factor my friend see how much radial load is acting and how much axial load is acting okay first it will depend upon that how much radial load is acting and how much axial load is acting if radial load is more then x will be more and if axial load will be more then y will be more okay so first it depends upon how much radial load is acting how much axial load is acting and second thing how dynamic the load is the load is not static the load is moving right so it also depends upon that okay its value is fixed x y value is fixed depending upon the type of bearing and depending upon the application okay for which application you are using and what are the type what is the type of bearing so based on that there are some values of load factors it is mentioned in design data book okay it is mentioned in design data book and v is known as race rotation factor now what is race rotation factor my friend See I told you that usually inner race is rotating outer race is fixed but in some cases outer race is rotating and inner race is fixed okay usually what happens inner race rotates outer race is stationary but in some case outer race is rotating inner race is stationary so in that case we will be different so its value is 1 if inner race is rotating its value is 1 if inner race is rotating and its value is 1.2 1.2 if outer race is rotating so which one is rotating depending upon that we have different values of v okay so this formula is used to find the equivalent load but you don't worry about this formula because you will never have to use this formula because in the question they will directly give the value of p okay they will directly give the value of p they never ask you to calculate p so this formula i am only explaining so that you will be able to understand what is equivalent load otherwise there is no use of this formula in exam in gate exam engineering services exam we never use this formula because they directly give the equivalent load okay so just put the values in this formula only remember this formula l10 equals to c by p to the power n n is 3 for ball bearing 10 by 3 for roller bearing do you understand this much my friend so we only have to solve the numericals based on this relation but my friend there is no time today so i will give you the numerical for your assignment and tomorrow next lecture we will solve this numerical together okay till then try to solve them on your own 
try to solve them on your own okay so note these numericals down note these numericals down and my friend in the next lecture we will solve these numericals together okay i will also post the pdf in our telegram channel okay so don't worry about that okay so note these numericals my friend note these numericals you will get the pdf in telegram channel so don't worry about that you will get these numericals okay i will post the pdf after the lecture in our telegram channel just follow the telegram channel if you are not able to find the telegram channel by clicking on the link just search for our telegram channel the name of our telegram channel is similar to the name of our youtube channel an academy gate me okay so search for that telegram channel you will get an academy gate me okay there are around 1000 followers there are around 1000 followers an academy gate me okay so these are the two numericals that i want you to solve okay this one numerical and this one numerical take the screenshot later take the screenshot later my friend or you will get the pdf okay all right my friend now my friend these are my contact details i always give you my contact details because if there is any confusion regarding your career or regarding your preparation you will ask me okay you can send your mail or you can find me on facebook or you can find me on instagram now my friend i told you repeatedly whatever we are learning here on youtube it is just trailer these are just some basic concept if you want to get rank if you want to get rank if you want to get into iits or psus then my friend you will have to learn a lot and this is not possible on youtube so you better subscribe to an academy plus which is india's number one online learning platform and it is better than any online learning platform it is even better than classroom learning why it is better because you will have daily live classes live classes daily by a lot of teachers in both the languages some le lectures are in hindi some lectures are in english so you will have no problem if you are if you are comfortable in english watch english lectures if you are comfortable in hindi watch hindi lectures okay crash courses before every exam there will be crash courses so that you will get the revision day doubt clearing session every fourth lecture is doubt clearing so that all your doubts are cleared okay rank improvement batch we are going to launch rank improvement batch from 1st june my friend 1st june new batch new batch will be there okay new batches from 1st june right now batches are launched but from 1st june we are going to launch a new batch for gate and ese in hindi there will be a new batch for english and there will be a batch for rank improvement rank improvement okay and there will be weekly test every one week there will be a test okay and there are multiple batches and you can join any batch you want even you can join multiple batches you can join two batches three batches four batches as many batches as you want you don't have to pay extra you only have to pay once okay take admission and then you can join any batch you want okay and my friend look at the type of visualization you will get look at the type of killer visualization you will get my friend which is not possible in classroom which is not possible on whiteboard these type of colorful images they will easily explain everything my friend everything will be explained easily using this colorful Im images using this type of visualization which is not present in classroom my friend okay and my friend if you are thinking that what is the difference between youtube classes and an academy classes look at this one example my friend this is the doubt posted by a student which is not possible here on youtube can you post a doubt on youtube if you have any numerical if you have an image of numerical can you post it on youtube no but you can post it on an academy plus and your teacher will explain the solution then and there so this is a very good advantage of an academy plus which is not possible on youtube and look at this my friend look at this live leaderboard look at this live poll and leaderboard what is live poll my friend whenever we give you a numerical let's say i've given you this numerical okay and i want to i want you to solve this so there will be polling my friend how many students gave the correct answer what is your rank among the student and what is the timing what is your timing see there will be timing and there will be rank 
so you will have that competitive environment you will have that competitive environment which is not present here on youtube so youtube is not designed for online learning an academy plus is designed for online learning so better join an academy learning if you want to get good rank okay so go to anacademy.com slash plus go to anacademy.com slash plus pick a goal okay your goal will be gate and ese then my friend choose which subscription you want to take choose which subscription you want to take okay choose which subscription you want to take okay whether you want to take one month two month three month subscription okay whether you want to take one month two month or three month subscription and based on that you can take the admission there are one year subscription two year subscription which are the best and don't forget to use my code don't forget to use my code approve 10 to get 10 percent discount okay 10 percent off and there is EMI facility on debit card as well as credit card. ATM card also there is EMI my friend. Okay, you can purchase the subscription on EMI. You will only have to pay 1875 rupees per month. 1875 rupees per month if you are paying on EMI. 1875 rupees per month. It is so less costly my friend very less this amount is very less compared to any other coaching this amount is very less you can monthly you can make monthly payments 1875 rupees per month okay use this code approve 10 and if you have any doubt you can always contact me these are my contact details okay so you can contact me and we can discuss in detail so this was all for today's lecture tomorrow in tomorrow's lecture we will solve the numericals and then we will start with sliding contact bearings okay Thank you very much, my friend. Thank you very much.